I had better news. I wish there was some um, arm twisting that I could do. Um, it doesn't appear for that that's that that's the case. I mean, if any of you have ideas or arms that you know how to twist, then please <laughs> please feel free to twist away because we're <coughs> sitting. Michael, I just want to add. I want to add ammunition to your angst. Um, a new Alliance, a, a, a joint venture between Cloud Alliance and New England Wireless, received a grant award to do wireless in Burke, Linden, St. Johnsbury, Danville area. Um, five weeks ago, we have not been presented any contract to sign, and we have very little time to get a lot of work done. The department is in disarray. Maybe we could all just go volunteer there and just that, that's going to be the fastest way to get broadband to the state is just to go and volunteer to do some tasks and in kind work for the state. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm going to I'm going to call Clay and offer that as not quite a joke. Um, I'll ask him that tomorrow. David, you had something. I think the legislature is asking this week for an update on how the money's gone out for broadband. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well. They're so buying. you can They're tune into that meeting. Yeah. So yeah, unless the federal government can sort of um unwedge its head, uh we'll say, and extend the deadline of those funds, yeah, I'm not super confident that um any of the wireless projects or any of those um, short-term projects right. will even happen. Well, yeah, I mean, how are you going to get enough fiber and do all that? <laughs> you know, between if if you if they cut the check, I mean, by this, you know, at this point, we're you're not they're not going to see the check until second week of October, frankly. So, um, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit grim. It's a bit unfortunate, but forget so, counting on the feds. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, certainly Jeremy, cynical in that regard too. Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, you know, and some of this, I, I, I think maybe is reframing a perspective a little bit here, because there was there was a, uh, and I, I'm going to assume you were part of this, even though I didn't see your name. I don't think there was an article in VT Digger about the presentation and the discussion with um, our representative in Congress. And there was a statement that was made there, and I don't remember exactly who made it, but man, it's just been bouncing between the hollows of my brain ever since. And it was that there's a $400 million problem that we're trying to solve with volunteers. And, you know, that's, I mean, here we are, we're two and a half years into this. You know, we're we're chasing every last nickel and the folks that are laying out the nickels, half the time their pockets are empty. And, you know, this is a this is a problem that and I, don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't mean that we shouldn't be doing what we're doing, but there may be a a legislative perspective that we should be putting a lot more effort into than trying to scrape this up from the scraps that fall off the table. You know, I, and I don't know if that means putting more effort into getting together with the other CUDs, or I'm not exactly sure what that means. You know, I'm from away, so I don't know anybody but you guys. But th this is, um, I I'm just unfortunately not seeing a whole lot of traction after this amount of time, and we barely have a quorum when there are really important things to do. And that's a problem that I see, just for, as an institution. This is an institutional problem we have. Yeah, and with so with all of your permission, I think we're segueing into something I had scheduled for a bit later, the grant funding update. So um, there is some, there's some good news. I mean, obviously with the kind of waiting on the CARES fund stuff is something that's a, that's a problem. And actually, you know, executing this stuff at the state level is, is kind of grim. So in terms of the CARES fund, I'm, I'm personally not optimistic that that's going to really be helpful. And so um, I think a lot of the time that we've spent trying to make that happen um, is maybe not going to 
we're not going to get as much out of it as as we or the state probably thought. That said, there the budget that was passed um, does have three million dollars for CUDs in some you know some shape, including 1.5 million that's earmarked for um, matching funds to go after the Vita loans. So um, our timeline, I mean our um, our timeline for getting fiber rolling is still kind of sort of on track. The timeline for getting fixed wireless, I think, is is off the rails. I'm, I'm really not sure that that's going to happen. But that $1.5 million is earmarked specifically for CUDs to get match funds for the Vita loans. So it seems like we will. I mean, should the budget get approved and should all of the internal um, organs of the state government make that happen. It seems like we will have that. The remaining 1.5, which again, <clears throat> um, which is earmarked for CUDs, that was supposed to be coming out of CARES funds, again, tied to the end of the year, and that was looking at m doing more planning stuff. So the um, that goes to decisions about new funding. So the general question that I'm gonna I'm gonna kick to that agenda item is, you know, what would we do if we had another three hundred thousand dollars that we had to spend by the end of the year? Which uh sadly it comes with this sort of you know cynical slant, which are we even going to get it in time to do anything with that? But I think there's a nice big discussion to be had there. Um but I'm going to back away from talking for a bit. Um, so grant funding update. We have more to talk about here, but I see Ray has his hand up. Go ahead. I just wanted to make sure we weren't bypassing uh, paying the invoice. And so I'd like to make a motion to pay the invoice for legal fees in the amount of $560.50. Second. I will. Second. Okay. So Siobhan seconded it. Th thank you, Ray. Thanks for catching that. I, I, I would have blown right by that. Okay, any further discussion about paying the invoice for the attorneys? <coughs> okay, we'll just do an all in favor. Aye. 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 Any, any opposed or would like to do a roll call vote? Any motion passes. Yeah, motion passes unanimously. Wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody. I will get that check in the mail. Um, so any other... Um, uh, David, do you want to do a, a high-level um, public forum consistent coverage of uh, where we are with RDOF? Should, should we um, do a project let's, management report? Of yeah, all let's, these? let's wait till that after that one. You want to wait till after the project manager? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put a a fork in. Um, we're, well, we'll put a bookmark anyway in grant and funding update. We'll come back to that in a bit. Um, all right, project manager's report. Tim, you want to take it? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so just give you an update on what I've been working on, as some of you have been involved. Um, out of the business development uh, committee, I am working on an RFP that I think basically is going to kind of encompass uh, capabilities and interest uh, request to those uh, ISPs that uh, trying to pull what they're capable of and where their interest levels might be with uh, with partnering with us down the road, whether that's fixed wireless or on the fiber. Um, participate certainly in observing a lot of the Senate and House uh, testimonies that uh, have been underway over the past couple of weeks. And um, those uh, certainly educational, informative and enlightening, uh, as well as the BCUDA. Um, been those Thursday morning meetings have been um, following along in those and getting up to speed on understanding what the other uh, CUDs are up to and, and how um, partnering opportunities and how the development of that entity is uh, is maturing. Uh, also, out of the business development, um, probably we'll send something off tomorrow. I've done some uh, research on demand aggregation software solutions, and we'll send out uh, some findings on on my research there with some uh, entities that are pretty mature in this area as uh, as things develop on the fiber to understanding where the markets might be and, and how we can best serve those as well as uh, ongoing marketing opportunities with the information it collects. 
um, I did work on a draft fixed wireless schedule, which obviously I think is probably need to get thrown out. So, uh, but uh, at least it's something that's a template in the future. And then have kind of switched and transitioned to some RDOP planning in uh, discussions with uh, the consortium and such. So just understanding who the players are, uh, what our role could be, and subsequently, more importantly, what, what CB Fiber needs to do as that um, auction looms near. And um, also, I'm just working on an update uh, per the grant um, to just send off to Rob Fish as well, um, just highlighting some of the progress that's been made over the prior period. So that's kind of what I've been up to. And um, also, I just on your treasurer, if you are looking for a, you know, kind of a, a paid bookkeeper, I'm on a couple of boards and we have some local bookkeepers. If you want me to send the information along, I can kind of give a, a referral to uh, someone in the area as well, if that's something that you'd like to like to know more about. So. Yeah, I mean, it r really, I, I don't know that we have the budget for a, like a fully paid bookkeeper, but if they w would be willing to at least partially donate their time or take a, you know, take a rather <laughs> light stipend, um, yep. you know, it yeah. would be, it would be helpful. So, I mean, if they can do it for the, for the public good. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, uh, it, it's someone that, you know, we, we contract for a couple of three or four hours a month and then they have a bill rate. So it's time and materials and certainly nothing full time, but, uh, you know, you can at least get stuff back in QuickBooks and, and such. Okay. Sounds good. Jeremy. Uh, I just looked up um, in the old minutes and the stipend for the treasurer was approved to be 200 per month. So I'm not sure how that would work out for the billing rate for that. But anyways, that, that that's what's approved so far. Well, for the for the immediate future, I mean, for the immediate future, it's it's back to me. Um, which is uh, so exciting, I know, but. Uh, I'm I'm already in the bank already on the bank I have the checks so um, we'll be fine for now uh, if anybody wants to volunteer to help me put the budget together and put them in line items and whatever just shoot me an email if you would uh, anything else Tim anything else that you want to report or have questions about not that I can think of and certainly if other things come up um, you know it's in my way for uh opportunities to help um and you know as a i i could certainly help on the uh bookkeeping side in the interim as well if that makes sense uh being the independence that i have I've certainly got some experience in that if, if that's something that would be helpful um at least in the shorter interim time yeah most definitely so, probably sometime this week if we can manage it so good. being on the executive committee is that something that you're going to want to rope myself and or fill into yeah, I, I would. I would like to to at least run them by you before I just run them by the whole board. Just a, kind of as a as a sanity check, if that's all right. Yeah, that'd be fine. Cool. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Tim? Michael. Well, I have a question for everybody, um, and Tim in particular. Um, it seems like uh, round two announcements from finally made yesterday and we didn't get the fixed wireless award and round three will be in approximately two weeks around the first of October announcements is what they're predicting um, and the sense is that oh they'll never get around to writing the contract they'll never get around to writing a check and this isn't going to work out but I think we're just talking kind of around the perimeter of it. Um, shouldn't we address whether we want this project or not? I'm, I mean, I'm personally not sure either, but I, I just think we ought to discuss it rather than just say, oh, well, that didn't work out, that's over. Maybe that's the case, but I don't think as a body we've decided that. So I thought we should discuss it to some extent. So I think that's a so let's if we segue then back into a grant funding update. What what do you all think? I mean, should we should we just retract, you know, retract the proposal that we have because it's being reconsidered for round three, but we wouldn't know. Like Michael said, we wouldn't know until you know 
beginning of October, does that blow our timeline? Does that make it impossible for us to install? So maybe Michael, so if, if you had project go and you had the money in your pocket, October 15th, would, would the, would the project as proposed be possible? Um, yes, but unlikely. Um, I think it would be really hard um, to, and Tim has already worked up kind of a timeline of things that have to get done and just lining up the contractors and setting poles and getting equipment in and getting it installed. It's possible. It is. I still think it's possible. Um, I know. And, and, and my company was going to be doing it, doing the work. And now, my other project is delayed if which if it, if it had been awarded i could have gotten you know a couple of weeks out of the way so i could devote more time to the cv fiber project so the, the combination of doing the one in in northeast kingdom um potentially the cloud alliance one if it's awarded in in um, round three and the cv fiber one awarded in round three we would be spread really thin. We would need a lot of outside support to make it happen. I think that could be organized. And I, I guess my recommendation is we shouldn't burn the bridge yet. I think we should leave it in the process and see if it gets awarded. And in the meantime, um, see if, if we can do some pre-organizing to see if it can be arranged. Okay. It, it so, has the potential. Of, I'll just finish one one more sentence. It has the potential of providing a good benefit to people within our district, and in particular, I think I forget whether it was Ray or Jerry. Somebody wrote today. Um, some people who may not see fiber for a very long time, and that benefit's important. So for those reasons, I don't want to throw it out yet, even though I am kind of pessimistic about the timeline. Okay, so could, if you had to guess, I mean, I know you're just sort of spitballing here, but you're saying possible but not likely. Could you give me a percentage chance, just mm -hmm. a total guess? So, I mean, is it 50-50? Yeah. Is it like 10%? How, you know, how comfortable are you that it, it that it could happen? 40 to 50%. Okay. Um, J Jerry, would you weigh in with what you said? And then I'd like to hear from Tim. David and Jeremy, Tim, David, Jeremy, Ray. Let me write this down. I, I, I would love to weigh in, and, and, and I apologize because I'm usually a booster, but this, this, this is just a fool's errand. And not only is it a fool's errand, but we're at risk at putting the financial viability of this entire organization at risk for the clawback. So you have a 50% and, and Mike, please don't take any of this personally. I'm just laying this out yeah. from, a, from, a, from my experience, one with working for the, with the federal government for the past 30 years and also my experience with contracting for the same amount of time. What they have asked us to do is not designed for a CUD. It's designed for somebody with deep pockets that can come in and throw their money up front and get results fast. We're at risk of spending money that they are pro proposing to give us. And then if we don't meet their criteria, the clawback is we have to give that money back, which we couldn't possibly do. And it would, it would kill this organization financially. We wouldn't be able to recover. And a 50% chance or a 40% chance, I, I would never advocate enter into enter into in, enter into a contract that, that the way this is lined out. I just I, I could never be a part of that. It, it's it's just not set up for this type of organization. Thanks, Jerry. So, uh, Henry, I'll, I'll add you to the end. Uh, Tim, you want to, would you ask your question? Me? You, yep. Okay, there's two Tims, remember. Oh, oh sorry, <laughs> Tim from Roxbury. 
Um, I, I was just writing on the chat window, has it been decided where the first round of towers or poles would be for fixed wireless because I might have missed it or anything like that, um, or I came to the table too late or something today trying to get connected. No, so so we 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 did choose that. I think there's t ten polls, and we know we know exactly where they're going to be. Um, if if you shoot me an email, I can I can forward that on. That was part of the the proposal that went in for. Uh, actually, it was considered for round one and round two, which has been uh, okay. No, turned down. Just two. Um, oh, just two. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Tim, they, Tim, all of all of the locations were north of the uh, the line around Barry. So not Roxbury at all. Um, there that were ten poles, basically in the northern half of Cent CV fiber territory. Thanks, Mike. Okay, um, Jeremy, you're up next. Uh, just one second. Mm -hmm. Just taking some quick notes. Um, I mean, I know that this is way a long shot but one thing that would increase the chances of this working is if the feds do extend you know sure. again i i think that we should not put much work into it because we're spread thin already but just leaving it in there and saying well hey maybe the funding gets extended and if it doesn't and if it looks like it's not going to happen then we say well no because just because it's awarded doesn't mean that we are obligated to take the funding. I think that taking the hat out now is maybe a little bit premature, may as well leave it in. And then if we decide we can't do it, then we say no. But I, I totally agree with Jerry that we need to be cautious and not you know, do something that is gonna put us at risk. Okay, uh, David. Uh, two things. One, I agree uh, with Jerry. Jerry and Michael. Yeah, I agree with Jerry on this, and and I have another thought. I mean, we were scored, from what I understand, very poorly in the system because of the price and the number of houses we're going to serve. But that's beside the point. They'll they'll let us know the next round. Um, the other thing is the demand for this was about school teachers and students and telehealth. And if I hear the governor and the health commissioner today, schools are going back. Um, let's knock on wood that the case rate stays low and we stay healthy. But I mean, I, I think we have other fish to fry and we should be moving as fast as we can on those other things. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, David. Ray? So, uh, Michael, I want to ask a couple questions <clears throat> having to do with the critical path. Assuming that assuming that we could do something, um, what, what is the critical path with regard to accomplishment is it getting the polls uh, from canada or someplace in the united states is it getting the hardware is it the labor uh, is it getting the internet connection or power connections what is it that's going to delay implementation of this uh, project of doing any towers uh, let's assume let's assume there's just two to do just to explain the process um, we have to hire a contractor who um, can set poles. Um, an example of that contractor could be Russian Electric or Eustis Cable. I think either of them have access to poles and access to equipment to set poles. So that can get done. Um, it's, it's a matter of just logistics of getting things in order and doing. The, the big time suck of all of them is certification of our locations that's what's going to be really hard to do within the time frame all of the things are going to take a bunch of time a few weeks here a few weeks there and before you know it you've used up three months but the certification of every location which is the only basis on which the department will fund is going to take more than a month of labor with a couple of teams running around trying to do these certifications so who does that is the who does certification? Excuse me? Who does the certifications? We have to provide the certification to the department. Okay. Is and this the a department contract? does not even specify the process and the documentation required? Is there a contractor that we hire to do certifications? 
No. Nope. Well, I suppose. Good. I don't know of one. <clears throat> but anywhere okay. you look at it, it's uh, it, it, it's particular to this kind of technology we're using. Not that it's wireless, but that it's CBRS wireless, which is a very particular kind of spectrum that can only be um, connected in a certain way. Um, I mean, we could hire some WISP to help us do this. We're going to need people. We're going to hire people to do it. Um, and we can train them. It's just time consuming to do. And so the reason I'm saying let's not withdraw yet is because of my hope that, that Jeremy's hope is right, that it will get extended. If it doesn't get extended, that's the 40 to 50% chance of getting it done in time. But if, if the deadline gets extended into next year, then it's easily done. That's the question. And so I, I would say, let's not execute the contract until we have better idea. If we're awarded, first of all, we may not be awarded, but if we're awarded, then we should be as cautious as they've been with us to figure out if we're protected. And Jerry, Jerry is quite right that we can't risk the organization. So, so my experience, my experience in um, doing what I anticipated to be 50 possible software contracts, okay, over a period of, of several years, a couple of years, which might uh, cost us about a million dollars, was to do a, a master service agreement, an IDIQ master service agreement with qualified contractors, doing an RFP, qualifying them that they're Python uh, programmers, that they were capable of doing the job, and then having two or three of them lined up to bid on the work as it came forward with no promise that they'd get any contract at all. In fact, they may not get anything. On the other hand, they might get 20. And so it, it only happened if certain things occurred, like getting funding. So it seems to me that it might be appropriate to get some IDIQ contracts in place where we have lined up people so that if and when things happen, that we're capable of pulling the trigger. If we're going to wait for three hundred thousand or hundred thousand dollars to come into place and then try to do this stuff, you know, we've we've just added two or three weeks unless we're starting to do sole source contracts, and you know what kind of you know criticism we'll get for doing something like that. I think we're better off kind of putting pieces in place so that we can execute if and when something happens. Okay, just a thought. Thanks, Ray. Siobhan, it's your turn. So I just wanted to say my experience with when there are delays that are caught, uh, my experience is with EPA grants. So they're federal grants coming to the state to do work for the EPA. Um, that whenever they delay, they extend. My concern is that they haven't said they're extending anything, even though they're delaying. Um, and I could easily see it turning on and becoming, no, no, we're going to stick by this deadline and you're, and you're host. But at the, at the same time, I could also see them like, oh, no, 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 we'll extend it. And at the same time, we also have a whole lot of, well, we've got these grants and we had this deadline, but we had to push it because blah, blah, blah happened. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay. And, and even an extension is, can be just an informal exchange, email exchange that we've had with their grants people. So I don't, I, so I'm worried, but I don't know how worried to be. So I kind of agree that, yeah, we don't take our hat out yet, but we can't risk the whole farm on this. I guess that's it. So, yeah, but it's state delays, federal deadlines. So it's not the same entity that's approving the deadlines. And if the state can't deliver the contract, can't deliver the funds, and the federal government's not expressing any sort of willingness, then, yeah. And the state is on the hook. Well, the state is on the hook, but a part, of our con part of our contract signs over that responsibility that the state has for the federal funds, signs that responsibility over to us. So we yep. are on the hook. The federal government essentially will claw back from us then with the contract that we signed. That was that additional language that was added to the uh, to the $100,000 CARES Act funds. 
Um, all right, I have uh, Henry, then Michael, then Jeremy. Henry? Yes, um, I was just going to um, echo what uh, Jeremy, uh, Matt already said, which is, you know, to to not bail. Um, we can always uh, bail after we get the money. Um, and so I don't need to reiterate what he said. I think he said that well. I'm I'm curious if there if you have a sense of um, what the barriers are or what the perception is that has um, uh, resulted in unfavorable outcomes for CV fiber. Well, and if why, there's anything why, we, why we didn't in, if there's why anything we didn't we get selected, that, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, David, you, you want to talk? Is to there that? anything we can do the, to to boost that before this next the third round? You know. Yeah. I, well, I can't. I can't speak for the exact numbers, but Ken Jones was on the uh, review committee for the state um, for the telecommunications advisory board, and I think what he told me, uh, somebody told me, uh, is that we our price per person was pretty high for a service. And we didn't have as many priority. They scored it on three different categories, and we did not score as high as other people in terms of those categories. So it's a, it's a three tier kind of a scoring system. And as Michael knows, I think is that they didn't find did they did they fund any fixed wireless in the second round? Oh, yes. one, 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 it, one up in the kingdom, right? Mostly a mobile wireless, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's hard to know. And Ken, Ken's not here, so I can't tell you on the detail. I think he saw the whole list. So I, I can weigh in on this. I, I talked to Clay a little bit, and he said, "Yeah, your your price point was high. We're not offering fiber, and um, you know, the, some of the other offerings that were out there were more cost effective to hit more people." You know, with the original uh, the original proposal that we had, that was a lower cost per subscriber, but it was a much bigger project, and it was a differently constructed project that had more risk built into it. And this board chose to direct the project team to step back from that risk and go for a more modest proposal. That more modest proposal, because of some of the built-in um, sunk costs that would be um, the same regardless of the size of the project um, just get spread out over fewer polls and fewer subscribers. So I'm not sure that there's a, a real good opportunity for us to then fix the proposal and take another crack at it and have it more um, and make it look better, frankly. I mean, I'm, I, I, if there are creative solutions that we can think about to do that, or maybe we even we scale it down even more to a couple polls where it's just if we get whatever sort of change they find in the couch after awarding the other the other grants and we you know we put out one poll and we have a CV fiber poll and it's right next to my house that's what I'm going to go for <laughs> so maybe each board member gets their own poll and you just talk to your neighbors um, I'm in <laughs> I like that yeah um, and Michael you're next anyway so. It's all you yeah. Um, so I spent the last four days doing my best to make make a better situation for the CV Fiber and Cloud Alliance um, proposals for round three, if not round two. Um, we cannot modify a proposal. Number one, we can't reduce it to two or three polls. You, it, the the process is over and they've been scored and. We can't do that. That's outside the rules, and other other participants would scream murder. Um, what I did for the last four days, but after I discovered that two factors caused our projects, besides cost, caused our projects not to be considered, were um, in my case a CUD objecting to 23 locations, and in CV, and in both of our cases um wireless being disfavored in this round wireless got a bunch of projects through in round one 
the great majority of them VTEL. And VTEL is uh, the third rail of Vermont broadband. And once uh, the Energy and Technology Committee got a hold of that, the department got a very strong message to steer clear of wireless in round two. And that's part of what happened here. Um, if we had gone with our original big project, it was, what was it, one and a half million? It was big, it was a lot of money. It would not likely be, even if it was more efficient and effective per location, it wouldn't have been funded anyhow because they don't want to throw that kind of money at something that's not fiber. So the scaled down version is a better, more competitive one in terms of what the project is and its total cost. But unfortunately, it is per location quite expensive and the odds of it coming being successful in round three are relatively low anyhow. But it doesn't hurt to leave it in. And so I favor that. The one other thing I wanted to mention was that, that I'm, a, um, I'm an officer in the Wireless ISP Association, National Association, and we had a meeting today with all the state coordinators of the country, and we were all talking about COVID projects, because that's what's happening everywhere. CARES money is funding broadband all over the place. And every state is doing it radically different from the next state. Some states threw tons of money at broadband, other states threw pocket change. Some states are following the federal guidelines to a T in the way that Vermont is. Other states are saying, let them try to come claw back that money from us. We're gonna build and we're going and if we don't get certified the right way or whatever, they're gonna have to come and grab the they're not going to get the money. So some states have actually taken this renegade attitude. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with Congress. Congress is not going to pass an infrastructure bill before the election, that's for sure. They're probably not going to during lame duck session either. They might extend the CARES Act deadlines. That could possibly happen. So that's the only hope I hold out for any of these wireless projects. Um, I started out talking about how I spent the last four days trying to improve the situation. And the, what I did was I talked behind the scenes to a lot of people in government and out of government who have contacts to express dismay at how round two went to bring some possibility that round three will, three will come back. You know, so round one was way over here, round two is now way over here and bring it back to the center a little bit. I think there's a chance for that. I think there will be some uh, more balanced decisions in round three because of the reactions and overreactions. And so there's a chance. That's it. Okay. So um, in the interest of wrapping this up and moving on, um, we'll give Jeremy, Matt, the second last uh, word. And I, I would like to add, my pitch, and then I, I would like us to make a decision about this if we can. So, Jeremy? I was just going to say that I think everything's already been said and that I don't need to say anything, so. Okay. So, um, my my comment here is that it's so it's it's easy to say that we should just stay in and we should accept it if we get it. Um, however, I'm the one that gets to do all of the background paperwork and negotiation and signing stuff or whatever, and it's not a completely trivial amount of work to do. So there is a um, reduction in, in my workload if we say we're out, that this is not likely to, to succeed. Um, on the other hand, just waiting until we hear about round three, that's fine. Uh, but I mean, if you really well, um, then let's hold out. But if if I was voting, if I was, you know, sole supreme leader or whatever i would i would say let's just withdraw our interest let them let them dole out the money to somebody else who can accept that risk and then um move on um focus on fiber like we have been and and get on with it i mean that's my that's my druthers so what i would like to do and um like i said i'm 
I'm of the opinion we should we should bail out of this, but I'm absolutely positively willing to go with the will on the board of this. And I think we may have a, um, I, I'm sure we'll have a split board, but I'm, I'm gonna go with Jerry on this. And I'm gonna move that we withdraw our fixed wireless proposal from the CARES Act process. I'll second. Okay, that was seconded by Frank. Any further discussion? Henry? Yeah, I, I'm listening to what you're saying and um, I'd like you to elaborate on where you would focus instead of, um, you know, keeping the paper trail rolling so that um, till round three is announced. In other words, is is your thinking that there's there's um, bigger things to concentrate on that that the CUD uh, money that the 1.5 million dollars in CUD money that that would keep you and all of us uh, I mean our portion of that would keep all of us very busy just trying to spend that before the end of the year is that kind of where you're going because I think that would help people in the decision making process on the vote. Yeah, so I mean, we're we're looking at, and I I don't know the timing of it, but um, the 1.5 million that's for matching funds, but there's also the the new funding agenda item that will be, you know, what else can we spend this on by the end of the year? If we're backing away from wireless, you know, can we start getting our fiber ducks in a row and go and hit our contractors up for doing the pole audits, the pre-engineering, and do all of this? If we can get part of the project paid for and done by the end of the year, then let's go and chase down contractors to do that rather than trying to go find poles, try to go find fixed wireless auditing people who are going to go and measure the signal strength at each residence, which is required and, like mm -hmm. Michael said, very, very time consuming. And then we can make sure that we have Tim Shea tasked on just fiber related so delivering that final goal of hitting you know fiber to everybody um, that's my that that's my sense here and then we I, we don't have to worry about chasing down you know getting people lined up and the back the back end logistics of potentially eventually delivering on the fixed wireless proposal that's my that's my answer to that and th thank you for prompting me up with that henry that's helpful and there is no, um, this is already cleared the white, whatever it is, uh, whitewash, no, the lighthouse uh, people in terms of that extra cud money being, because I, I know the lighthouse people said that we couldn't do it and, and I, I, it's already made the lighthouse barrier. That's my yeah, so, yeah, so so there's some nuance about what what part of that is uh, allowed and what's not. The lighthouse, I think, those folks, and the legislature did not agree with that assessment. For the record, I mean, oh. and they were pretty clear about that, and they were going to go forward with it regardless. But the, procedurally, whatever. Um, but they did previously approve small, narrow, project centric. Um, Pull audits, which we could we could do because other CUDs have already received funds to do this and already have you know contractors in the pipeline to do this. It's just that the big statewide picture that we were talking about through through Vicuda was not um, was not thought to be falling within those parameters. Uh, David, I saw you had your hand up. Yeah, I mean the the, the rationale they got around Lighthouse this time was. Yeah, if you did pull inventories, is it considered workforce development? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Okay. Anything else before we we vote? Yeah. Here, Michael. Um, we also could consider doing an end run around um, connectivity initiative and use three hundred thousand dollars to put up a smaller wireless projects targeted at locations that are late in our schedule um, that that would be one way to salvage this idea I'm, it, I'm not totally averse to abandoning it i'm not i don't want to be seen as 
fighting for this. I'm just coming up with the ideas and I'm thinking about um, all the effort that we put Fred to, to design one and then another and, and all that and all the money we put into that and the planning that I've done and Tim's done and others. Um, I just quite, I'm not quite ready to say let's abandon it until we're sure that we can't accomplish it. So, so I'm, in, I'm gonna vote um, no in this resolution, mainly because I'm hoping that the Congress will extend the deadline and make it possible again. Fair enough, and I would like to come back to that using the extra several hundred thousand dollars. I'd like to come back to that when we talk about the new funding decisions and talk about, you know, could we do a small fixed wireless project with that and not not go through round three or whatever. So, um, all right, any other commentary on this before we put it to a vote? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Is it both houses of Congress that have to approve an extension or one? I think it's both. I don't know. Okay, because I can't see the Senate doing it with what's going on right now. Yeah. It might be. Yeah. Like, it, it's not it's not spending billions of dollars. It's just saying you have more time, guys. So the, I see it as more possible than an infrastructure bill. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, let's take the vote. I think we're going to do this roll call because we don't have consensus. Um, I'm going to start with um, starting the order of people in the chat window. There, we start with Alan. No. Okay, uh, Andy. No. Okay, Chuck. Uh, just to be absolutely clear, no is we abandon, and yes is we stay the course. Correct. Ah. No, I'm sitting no, no. I'm yeah. voting that we abandon, no, that we jump ship. Al Alan and Andy, was that clear? No, I'd like yes. to change my vote. <laughs> so is yes is this. abandoned, no is stay the course. Okay, thank you. Alan, like did you want to change, change my vote to yes? Okay, Andy, you want to remain as a no? Yeah. Okay, Chuck? This is such a such a complicated <laughs> issue, but I think I'm going to have to say yes. Okay, David. Yes. Frank. Yes. Henry. Yes is that uh, we abandon, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, Jeremy. Um, that's me. I, I say yes. Uh, John Morris. Yes. Uh, Katarina. Oh, yes. Okay, Abandoned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Michael? No. Okay, Phil? I couldn't hear you. Phil? I saw I saw your lips say yes. I could not hear your voice, though. Uh, Ray? No. Okay, Siobhan? Yes. Uh, Tim Sullivan? I say yes, stay with trying to get fixed wireless access points. Um, if it turns into um, more no votes abandon, I would at least uh, suggest that the no um, information going to them says why. So, so let, let me stop here again. Again, voting yes means yes to abandon the fixed wireless proposal. No means do not abandon the fixed wireless proposal. So right. would you would you like to walk away from us applying for the CARES fund money for the fixed wireless proposal for round I'd, three? I'd like to, if you're asking me, Jeremy. Yes, because I'm going to have I'm going to tell your vote according to that. That's what we're doing. Yes. No, I I, I thought I made it clear. I'm, I'm I'm saying I would like to pursue the fixed wireless access bill, but if it goes the other That's way. Yes or no. <laughs> so, so you you don't have a choice to qualify this. You can vote yes to abandon this particular proposal so it doesn't get considered. Abandon or don't abandon. You don't don't have any sort of nuance here. Or abstain. Or you can abstain. I'm saying don't abandon. Okay, don't abandon. Okay, so that's that's a no. Okay, Tom Fisher. Yes. 
Okay. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven yes. One, two, three, four no. The yeses have it. Um, I'm happy to take any direction as we as I send a message to the uh, public service department to let them know uh, why we are retracting our proposal. Um, so if you have suggestions about how to approach this, I don't think we need to discuss this right now. I will draft that language, send it to me in an email, if you would please. So Tim, if you have any idea about how to frame this from what you were saying, um, if you could shoot that to me, that would be that would be great. Um, any other grant or funding updates that we need to talk about, Michael? Let me just a quick comment on your request. I'm not gonna give you my suggestions now, but we take advantage of this opportunity to um, help the department understand the, why their delays have caused this decision. I can definitely do that. That's what I was trying to get at. Perfect. I can definitely, I, I can definitely uh, tone myself down when I write that polite letter to them and say, yeah, th th thanks, but no thanks. Um, okay, anything else? Um, uh, David, did you want to say anything, or does anybody want to say anything about um, the RDOF stuff? Because we're still in, we're still in the funding update. You're muted. So the IDOF partnership of NRTC, WEC, Kingdom Fiber, EC Fiber, and CV Fiber had a good meeting this week. And moving along, um, WEC is have a board meeting next week. Um, to decide whether what they're going to do. WEC did receive their feasibility study, yes, uh, Monday. They haven't shared it with us yet. Um, but it looks like they're only going to be interested in running fiber and not doing any drops. Uh, in terms of RDOF, it's sort of a mixed bag. It looks like we have enough people to work on it to get ready to do some bidding. I didn't attend the, there was a bidding workshop, I guess, yesterday or today. And um, right. but progress is being made. and. What it does show is we gotta get we gotta get moving on ISP, guys. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but it's all dependent on getting us an ISP to even work in this. So anyway, we're gonna be talking about that at Thursday's business development meeting. And that's my update on our out of what's that an FCC bidding workshop? Or no, that was from our consortium. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we're done with funding updates. Oh, I see Jeremy. Go ahead. You're muted. Siobhan in, in the chat asked, what is keeping us from deciding on an ISP? That's a good question. David, you want to take that one? Or, or Tim, for that matter? Uh, Tim, I should take it. I mean, Tim's working on it, so I'll let Tim take it. Yeah, I think... At this point, it's just um, being able to understand what people are interested in doing and who the best partner would be. And it, it could theoretically be that we have several ISPs, depending on what the scope is and where we are in the maturity of our projects. But at uh, this juncture, is is starting to understand who's out there, what are they interested in partnering with us on, and then starting to strike those and mature those relationships into some at least um, memorandum of understandings or letter of intents, and then eventually getting to the contractual phase once the details and timing and scope of projects mature into 2021. Nothing else on that, Siobhan? Any other follow-ups? Okay. Thank you very much for that, Tim. Um, Let's see, uh, moving along, let's, uh, we skipped over policy committee report back. Uh, Phil, I see you turned off your camera for the moment. I don't know if you stepped away from the computer. I'll give you a moment if you're, if you're here. All right, good night, Jerry. Thanks for joining us. Um, all right, let's um, pause on the policy committee for a moment and we'll go on to the, um, all right, we'll go on to the decisions about new funding. funding. 
So uh, we we heard uh, before we sort of talked around it. Uh, Rob Fish at last Thursday's meeting said there may be up to an additional three hundred thousand dollars per CUD to spend on things related to planning and getting broadband to folks who need it by the end of the year. Um, and the question was, what are we going to spend that? What are we going to spend that on? Can we spend that on anything? And I think. Um, as I recall, Tim, you put together a, um, I think you sent that out to, I don't know if you sent it out to everybody or if that was just business development. Um, uh, where did that go? So, somebody sent something out. I'm, I got a lot of emails it today. It was Tim. So, yeah, Tim, do you want to you want to talk to oh, that? Sorry, yeah, my audio cut out there. Um, yeah, so I did come up with, uh, I can't remember how many, six or seven um, with, some input from others as far as options to consider um, and this at the current juncture does appear to be money that needs to be spent by 1230 or there would be a uh, the clawback provision so I think you know taking into account the uh, kind of we'll say the risk aversion or reluctance to take a lot of that on um, focused on projects that would not take uh, too much uh, risk into uh, into mind and and using the funds wisely to uh, not leave money on the table. So I don't know if you want me to run through that list or. So um, one moment, I, I just want to I just want to mention what what we are kind of proceeding under the impression that the business development committee was going to make a more concrete proposal was going to take this up on yeah. Thursday. So I don't know that we have a decision point on this tonight. I did put Tim, I did put your um, your seven suggestions um, into the chat, so you should be able you should all be able to see that over there. Um, uh, Jeremy, you had a question, and then I, I guess I, I would like you, Tim, if you could just walk through those. Maybe we can just chat about them briefly. Jeremy, you first up. Yeah, so th this is just a thought that I had, and it may not be something that anyone knows, so maybe something to look into. But if we get the 300K and we apply it to fixed wireless, would there then be that performance requirement? Because that seemed to be the massive sticking point. Um, can we just put up the polls and have polls and then not prove that they're actually working with the 300k? <laughs> um, I think we we could. I think we could. I mean, it's it's not baked into the contract in the same way as the other one was. That said, if we're not providing a minimum standard connection to the people, that just makes us look terrible. But um, Michael, you want to address that super briefly, and before yeah, we yeah, no, yes, I promise to be brief. Jer Jeremy's <laughs> right on on that. We do not need to meet that standard. And yes, Jeremy Hansen, there's no reason we can't deliver 25 megs. It, the problem was just the certification. It wasn't that this, the technology can't do it. It's just this requirement of a certification that's that's onerous. And so this would be a way around that, and it would speed it up. It's, it'd still be a challenge, but it would eliminate that part. Okay. So, uh, Tim, would you uh, would you w walk us through those? Sure. Um, the first one is as we were just discussing. So, either uh, grabbing the recommended towers to put in some fixed wireless locations. And as Michael said, that the, some of the pressure could be off on the speed tests, but uh, would probably still need to get those up and running. Not fully sure what you know what the sign-off would be for um, for the completion of that project. Uh, the next could be some pre-engineering and uh, other work that could be done with a um, consultant as far as getting uh, prepared for the fiber builds into 2021. That could include uh, pole audits and any other uh, build out provisions to help pave the way and smooth things out uh, going into next year's uh, build cycles. Another provision could be uh, pre-purchase uh, materials that uh, would help for 2021 future expenditures and that could be any number of things. Um, but uh, looking at what the opportunities would be to, to uh, get some uh, physical goods um, prepaid in uh, in this calendar year. 
you know, there could be uh, looking really for what the partners are um, and doing a study more uh, into the phase one areas for uh, looking for the middle mile uh, fiber partners and kind of move more detail into uh, some engineering and understanding uh, and also any dark fiber that might be out there that we could uh, strike relationships with to help um, identify the, the phase one builds to prioritize. Next, uh, as I mentioned earlier, doing some work uh, with uh, demand aggregation software and it could be um, looking to prepay uh, some of those software license fees and start to get a tool more mature and developed. Um, it's about a four week ramp up in general with these so plenty of time and uh, could be some um, way to get some momentum of uh, collecting better customer future potential customer data as well as identifying those areas that we uh, more development on the website and using uh, whether it's tying in the demand aggregation software or just maturing the website to uh, make that a more attractive landing place for customers and informing uh, on the status of what's happening with CV Fiber. And next would just be putting money towards uh, more marketing campaigns to uh, canvas the 20 communities, uh, letting know what's out there, what's coming, and what they need to do to be able to partner and participate more in, uh, in the work that you've got coming towards them. Okay, thanks for that, Tim. Uh, Chuck? Okay, uh, first, just a, a general question, and then I'll have a, a couple of specific questions about what was put here and a couple of comments as well. Um, the first general question, is there any way we can spin leveraging this into beta matching somehow? I mean, uh, uh, is it really just completely off the table? So what, whatever we spend this on has to be signed, sealed, delivered, and concrete or planning by the end of the year. So okay. the VITA matching funds, we should have those by the end of the year too. This, that's a separate pot of money, and we should, we should have access to that. Okay. Um, so then a couple of specific questions. Uh, first of all, um, I know in a lot of other industries, uh, due to COVID, supply chains have been impacted and, and materials costs have shot way up, particularly in, in um, uh, building space. They're up about 40% right now. I'm wondering if anybody has a sense as to whether, uh, you know, if we were to pre-buy materials for future phase one right now, whether we would actually potentially be paying a, 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 an, a, an extra premium on that, like in other industries. Uh, I know a number of people are actually postponing renovations and, and such as a result of that huge increase. Um, and then two comments, um, although they, they, they kind of fall under, under the same umbrella, which is around um, demand aggregation software and uh, number seven, promoting more aggressive marketing campaigns. I do feel that both of those items are quite premature at this point in time. Uh, as you all know, my background is, is in, in the startup world, um, and it's often two, three years after launch with customers before you can really justify the ROI and demand aggregation software uh, that has any level of sophistication. Otherwise, you hire a you know a thirty thousand dollar a year marketing manager and and call it a day because those demand aggregation softwares tend to be much much higher than that. Um, so just just a, a comment on on that front. Uh, I think if we were to do anything, we should really be focusing uh, any sort of spend there on things that move the needle truly toward phase one. Uh, and perhaps that's a development of of things like private loan program that gets us towards that Vita matching money 
uh, you know, we have a, a general sense of how to run a, a loan program based on EC Fiber's initial information, uh, but we have quite a bit more development we have to do to, to make that tangible. And then once we actually have something in hand like that, marketing it makes a lot of sense, but just marketing our current state of the world doesn't make a ton of sense to me right now, other than the updates we send out to our community. All right, thanks, Chuck. Uh, Andy, would you, would you uh, verbalize what you put in the chat? Yeah, and I don't know that there's an answer to it. I just, it's a little unfortunate or odd that, you know, we're in a situation where we're talking about ways to spend money that don't deliver any connectivity, um, and yet we're abandoning in a way that would deliver connectivity because of, you know, testing or other performance constraints. And, you know, some of this isn't really in our control. So it's just kind of a, it's a very odd scenario um, that we're in. And I, you know, like it's hard to understand why we would qualify to like do, you know, generic planning or pre-buy materials just because you spent the money by the end of the year and whether that qualifies, I guess it's okay. I'm not against it, but it's just weird. That's all. It's, it's yeah. difficult to comprehend. But it's, it's, it's really about the encumbrances that the federal and the state governments have placed on different buckets right. of money. Right. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. Michael. So we will t take this up Thursday night in, in the business development committee meeting. Um, the one suggestion I have is that uh, I think almost every item in this list I support as possible good uses of funds. I don't know. What I don't know is what will pass muster with, with the gatekeepers. And somebody ought to be checking with, I don't know whether it's Lighthouse or someone at the department or someone in the legislature to, to know which of these things are eligible. So we don't waste time debating something that's going to be turned down anyhow. Um, so that's one suggestion I have. And, and in re relation to that comment about um, construction materials and their costs, um, this I think is different from building materials in that the demand isn't just from pandemic and other related things like that. The demand is going to be hugely affected by RDOF. After the RDOF auction is over, there are going to be projects financed all over the country needing fiber. And they're going to need a lot of it. And already now, companies are buying fiber and stock, stockpiling it, hoping they'll win RDOF and having the fiber so they can get ready to go. I, yesterday, paid 100% extra for fiber because I had to get it for a project that has to happen now. And that was because it was the only place in the country I could find this fiber. I think the idea of stockpiling some if we can find it is probably a wise investment. I think the inflation is going to increase, unfortunately. So that's just an industry point of view on that. Okay, uh, Tim, you had a comment? Yeah, I think uh, kind of to Michael's, I think uh, Rob Fish has said that he would be kind of the gatekeeper of, you know, not the final buck would stop with him, but I think bouncing the focused ideas off on him, whether it's this list or another list or a shorter list, would be the first person I would recommend. Um, and I could certainly check with Rob to see if those would pass muster with him, kind of having a good pulse of what uh, will or will not be approved. So that after Thursday's meeting and some clear guidance, um, that would be my recommendation is to is to use him as the first, uh, first stop gap. Is there a chance I, I you actually... could ask tomorrow or Thursday morning before the meeting? Certainly, I mean, I could check with him on this list or any any uh, any other additions and and see and get a better sense. Probably makes sense to do that and roll out any that may not. So I can check with him tomorrow. I th I think that would be valuable going to the business development meeting where you can say, yeah, the stockpiling thing that's a good idea. But Rob said, yeah, that's really. <laughs> 
really not something that we can support. I think having that additional information would be would be super valuable. Sounds great. Will do. All right. Any uh, so if you have any uh, any additions or um, suggestions to this, um, I do see you, Henry. If you have any additions or suggestions for this, I would say send them to David and Tim and Henry. What you got? <laughs> You're muted. You're muted, Henry. Uh, based on what you just said, um, is is it worthwhile for us to get a sense from the group as to what the what the priorities are, assuming they went through at this time? So, in other words, to get a sense whether people are are interested in in the uh, engineering more than the others or you know the marketing more than the others is would that be useful at this time um, well yeah i would say if anybody has any any thoughts about one of these versus another so M michael just weighed in and said that he thought that the stockpiling of you know pre-buying the materials was was a good move chuck weighed in on what he thought were were priorities and i would say if anybody else has any sort of suggestions uh, if you've got a you know brief comment about them tonight, let's let's hear it. Otherwise, if you chew on it for a bit, I know Ray weighed in on this via email. Um, and if you have comments, I would say send them to David and Tim. But, okay, so, yeah, I, I would just kind of vote for two, you know, doing the engineering, helping uh, aid in getting things, you know, starting the build out would be, I think, the highest priority assuming that it would qualify. Okay. Any other thoughts? Any any thoughts about the taking some of this and doing doing the, the, the ten wireless sites that we'd previously identified or maybe half of them? And no answer is, is an okay answer too. Okay. okay. Still just Thursday. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll have the yeah. business development committee chew on this quite a bit more. The only one I would eliminate from the list is number four, because I don't believe there's any darker middle mile fiber in CV fiber territory that's available to us. Um, I could be wrong, but but I'm not aware of any state fiber or any non-commercial fiber that's available to us other than Belco. Belco has fiber. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I think if I read into this a little bit, it might be reaching out to the commercial providers and trying to figure out how many of them would be willing to lease it. I know we've had this conversation four or five times before, and that's, and that was my, my sense too. But is it, is it even worth, is the juice worth the squeeze reaching out to, you know, CCI or whomever and saying, hey, can we piggyback on your, on your middle mile? You can waste your time. <laughs> it, it, they will say no. They will say no. Yet they'll sell you lit fiber, but they will not give you dark fiber. Fair enough. All right. Anything else on this? Any last words? Okay. So let's move on. So decisions about new funding, we've essentially kicked that over to business development. We'll come back to this um, at the next meeting, I guess, if not sooner. Uh, approval of the September 8th, 2020 um meet, meeting minutes any other any other edits or anything else from what jeremy has sent to us okay i i vote that we approve it looks September. like was david trying to say something oh i'll You're second it there you go <laughs> okay well, I, I i i hadn't finished the motion yet so that stand by <laughs> Okay. I move that we that we approve the September twenty second, twenty twenty. I'm sorry, the September eighth, twenty twenty governing board meeting minutes in the with the newest revision as submitted by Jeremy Matt. David, you have something to say? I'll second it. Wonderful. Second All right. It. So moved, moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed or in want of uh, roll call or abstentions? 
Okay, hearing none, passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, we got to back to the policy question. Oh yeah, policy so let's circle back to policy committee report back. Phil, did you want to take that? Uh, we're not getting any audio from your mic. You are unmuted in Zoom, but your computer mic is screwing up. Okay. Try clicking on the gear in the upper right hand corner and in there checking what your what, what is selected for a microphone. Okay. It's, it looked like you said I am. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. <laughs> so, so you you could, if you wanted to, Phil, if you wanted to try to dial in on your phone, and you we can get your voice that way, or if somebody else who was also at the meeting would like to, uh, um, talk about what we, uh, what y'all had in that meeting, until we can get Phil. Well, I think the two of us who were, this is Alan. I think the two of us who were, sort of working on draft language uh, to come up with a proposal for the board were Ray and I, and we we didn't we weren't able to 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 get together until shortly before the meeting tonight to hash out some language that he had come up with that would make um, uh, substantial revisions to one of our existing policies. So I I think the best thing might do would be to to pr postpone any more action on this until the next meeting to see if we can work that out. Okay. That sounds like a plan. It looks like we have consensus from Ray and Phil. Um, any other, anything that we want to task the policy committee with taking up, changing? Okay, you can shake your head no, Ray, but we can still task please, you. Please don't task us anymore. <laughs> this, this, is one of the high, this is one of those hydro-headed issues that could go in 5, 10, 15, 20 different directions. So I think if we try to focus on what we know we should be doing as quickly as possible, that we can resolve this and, and move on. That sounds like a plan. Okay. All right, so let's go on to round table. Um, Alan, while we have you, oh, you just remuted. Um, let's do round table starting with Alan. Uh, I, I think most of us who have been around a while probably felt flashes of the frustration we felt during the first couple of years of uh, CV fiber starting up. And it seems like from a phase where we thought all kinds of things are gonna be possible, we're kind of back to wondering how we're gonna get ourselves in gear here. Um, and we just have to keep pushing, I guess, and, and, and learn to deal with a lot of frustration, which a lot of people are dealing with anyhow. And ours is uh, more of an esoteric, uh, unbuilt kind of a frustration. Uh, but it is difficult, and I, I think again, what this, what the state and the federal government are doing to volunteers around the country who are trying to solve something that they themselves were not able to solve for a number of years, is really embarrassing, and I'm, I'm embarrassed for my government. I, I will say that. Okay, thanks, Alan. Andy. Oh yeah. I don't... <laughs> I, I guess I could echo some of that sentiment, but I'm good. Yeah, I share the, some of the frustration and sadness, but yep, good. All right. Thanks, Andy. Uh, Chuck? Uh, I just want to mention uh, the communications committee is going to be meeting next Tuesday, it sounds like. Um, and I know we have some new members since uh, since it was formed. So um, if you aren't clear as to what it is or why it is or if you might like to get involved, uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, and I can add you to some uh, communications in the invite. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Chuck. David? Well, I don't remember if we t mentioned the update that Congressman Walsh had a roundtable phone call for all the CUDs about a week ago or so. And he's pretty optimistic in terms of a rural broadband initiative that he and a rural broadband caucus that is both Democrat and Republican making progress probably next year. Um, and so to that extent, that was you know, more positive than I, I, I'm still pretty doubtful on an infrastructure bill given the debt. But anyway, that's one thing that I thought I should share with everybody. But I am optimistic about moving forward more than Alan and Andrew on, on getting things going soon. I, I think if we get 
some momentum and finding contractors, getting an ISP, or, or sorting out what ISPs we want to work with, and and assigning them responsibilities for things. We might might do a lot better than keep on meeting every month and feeling a little. When are we going to get going? All right. Thanks, David. Henry? You're muted. David, that was perfect lead into what I, I, I would reiterate what you said. Um, the, what I heard earlier in this meeting was that we were kind of looking at who wants to play with us and then deciding where we want to go based on who wants to play with us, which is, you know, definitely reality. But I I don't see that getting us any closer to what do we want to be when we grow up. Um, and uh, I think we need to still have that effort underway um, in conjunction with the um, effort of who wants to play with us. And, um, you know, in that regard, it's simple things like do we want to own shit or not and stuff like that. And I, I think those are things that we we need to be thinking about. And, and I've sent out a couple of things that I've found in different sources on how to decide what you want to be when you grow up and their decision matrices and stuff like that. I don't know if at some point we might want to dedicate a meeting towards kind of going through those with everybody and seeing, you know, if we can come to a consensus at a high policy level as to what we want to be when we grow up and then, you know, feather that in with, you know, who wants to play with us. So, I don't, uh, well, go ahead. No, I just, the conclusion is I, I don't want to leave it up to who wants to play with us. I think we should also have responsibility. Thanks, Henry. Um, and j just so you know, I, I, as you were saying that before, you said we need to have a, a meeting dedicated to it. So I actually I wrote that down as something that we need to talk about at the next meeting. So the what we're going to be when we grow up question. And I would encourage all of you before that meeting to take a look at um, at what Henry sent. It was that was what like a week ago, I think you sent it. Well, there was a couple, but yeah, there's two of them that that were different from different sources that just looked at different kinds of ways of making a decision. Okay. So uh, I am up next. Yeah, by the way. Pardon? Okay. I'm sorry, they were just, they were emails. They weren't yes. to the, okay. Okay. So um, so my, my commentary is that, um, in terms of the new funds that we're looking at, we still need to be sure um, and we need to get some clarity on when we can reasonably expect to have them in hand. So with the new budgeted CARES fund stuff, even though it's less less tied to performance and whatnot, we still need to have most of it in hand before we can do really do anything. Uh, the thing I'm most happy about and the thing that makes me most optimistic is the dedicated matching funds that were passed by the legislature in, in the budget that come out of the general fund that don't have a time limit and that we can reasonably apply for and get the Vita, you know, get the Vita truck out of the garage, I think. Um, I also want to mention our next scheduled meeting, our regular meeting is, um, uh, it's not October 6th, it would be October uh, 13th. So if we, um, if we, find that we need to meet before then, um, I will call a special meeting, particular if we hear more about funding. Um, or if you think that, you know, business development committee folks, you know, uh, communications committee folks, policy committee folks, if you think we need one before then, just let me know. Otherwise, we're going to stick with October 13th for now, I think. And uh, I, I want to continue to thank all of you for showing up for these and putting in the work and spending these Tuesday nights doing this. It's not, you know, we've gone through a lot of people, but we still have, you know, we still have folks showing up. And as long as we keep showing up, we will cross the finish line as frustrating as it might be and however long it takes us to get there, we will, I am, I am confident that we will get there. All right, uh, Jeremy Matt. Uh, yeah, 
thanks everyone and sorry i had to jump off real quick uh i had to disconnect the kids wi-fi so that i could still hear the meeting so <laughs> we need better internet around here <laughs> anyways that's all here, thanks. Here. thanks jeremy uh john morris i have nothing to add okay thanks john michael the town of craftsbury when it was planning its municipal project started out with a committee of 50 and it ended up with a committee of four and one of those four was from out of town it was me and we got it done so keep the faith and for the brothers gilbert i want to say that there is actually cause for optimism and we're going to at the business development committee meeting on thursday we're going to discuss it more at the WEC ardoff meeting the other day a lot of things were discussed that can't be discussed publicly but separate from those things there was a lot of discussion about isps and who would do what and there's there's some real positive developments that um, I hope we'll be able to present to the next board meeting and we'll start discussing it Thursday night. So um, keep the faith. All right. Thank you, Michael. Ray? I'm with Michael. I'm going to keep the faith. I'll show up at the Thursday board meeting, the policy committee meeting, and the communications committee meeting and keep pushing these strings. And eventually, one of these strings is going to straighten out. We're actually going to push something further down, like fiber, maybe, you know, and get it someplace. So yeah. I'm, I'm in. All right. Thank you, Ray. Siobhan? I live in optimism right in the middle of orange, this little pocket of optimism. So I'm, I'm here for the long haul. You guys are going to have to haul me out of here or have a vote of no faith or something. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. All right, thanks, Siobhan. Uh, Tim Shea? Uh, having, you know, been with you for less than a month, I'm actually pretty optimistic and don't want to just echo, but I think David and Michael hit on it. And um, I think you're on the cusp of, of doing some really good things. So um, stay the course. I'm certainly happy to be along for the ride and uh, helping you get there. But I think you're you're on the edge of, of really um, getting some tangible things done and uh, really starting to make a difference in your community. So thank you and uh, look forward to helping you get there. All right. Thanks, Tim. And Tim Sullivan. Um, I'm good other than uh, I was hoping to get maybe uh, like by the end of the month, like a statement that we could send to our uh, our towns and our, our folks that are interested just more than anything, just to um, have something to keep on reminding the people out there that we are here and we are doing this. So just a short statement, doesn't have to be long by any means. Um, just something that everybody, I guess, uh, approved too. I don't want to, I don't want to do it without, you know, learning the lingo and the language first that you guys are using for this. Thanks, Tim. That sounds like a, like a softball pitch to you, Chuck. Take it away. <laughs> that is exactly why we're meeting next week uh, is to get one of those uh, uh, set up and approved um, and Michael, you've been a big help on those updates in the past, so I'm going to be uh, pulling you into this, even though you're not officially communications committee as well. So uh, look for that coming your way. Um, and thank you to Alan, who has volunteered to produce the first draft. It's, it's always a huge help and kind of the biggest barrier of them all. And I, I would like to add shorter is sweeter, because if these things go on front page forum, you're looking at them on your phone. People don't read stuff that you have to scroll through too far. So shorter, the better. All right. Thanks, Tim. And uh, last but not least, Tom Fisher. Yeah, I, I think there are a lot of great comments in this round table. I, I agree with just about everybody. Um, I'll just you know, add in the keeping the faith. I mean, think about, you know, is any, can anybody predict where we're going to be two months from now? Help post an election. I mean, I'd say, there's no point in giving up at this point. You have no idea what's around the corner. So, yeah. <laughs> That's it. All right. All right. Thanks, Tom. And David, before we adjourn? 
Yeah, I just have a, a, a public policy question. And if I was to hold a community meeting on Zoom, do I have to advertise that to the whole CV um, fiber communities? Or what's the rule on, on public meetings on that kind of a score? It's an information uh, meeting. So an informational meeting, if it is a meeting of more than a quorum of any of our public bodies, even if those they're not engaged, you should warn it as a public meeting to all of our communities. So if it's if it's you, David Healy, giving a presentation and all of us are sort of passive on the phone and not otherwise involved in any sort of discussion, you could probably get away with this is the David Healy show. Um, but for the most part, if there is a quorum of any public body, you should warn it like a public meeting. Okay, thank you. Sure. Or were you talking about a, a presentation to your town? Correct. Yep. Oh. So, so that would be you talking to your town, so that's not. And we want to see the PowerPoint slides first, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll share them. Yeah. Ray, <laughs> David Healy, right? And Ray Pelletier, and you present it to Northfield. It's all good. <laughs> okay, I'm. I will declare the meeting adjourned. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Uh, we are adjourning at seven thirty-nine. Thank you, guys. Yeah, talk to you Good soon. Night, everyone. Thanks, Thanks. Hey, everybody. Great.